Hi, I'm Lauren from Access Your Life, which is an online platform encouraging people living with disabilities and their carers to review medical equipment, share their experiences, to help other people living in similar situations achieve a brighter future. One of the things I love to talk about is traveling with a disability. It's not always easy, in fact, it's a nightmare at times. However, I don't let it stop me. I love traveling, I love seeing the world, and I enjoy using our platform to help other people do the same. Over the years, I've learned a lot about traveling um, with my disability, with medical equipment, a wheelchair, lots of do's and don'ts. So this video is all about my top 10 tips for traveling with a disability. Now, obviously some of these tips aren't valid if you are traveling by train or car, however, I have tried to put together a list of tips that you can still apply to most situations. So my number one tip is choosing the right flight. Obviously if you are tied to a specific date and time this is quite tricky, however where possible I prefer to choose a flight that is later in the day. This is so I can make sure my daily medications are in my system and I've had a bit of rest before I have to go through security, sit in departures, and just go through a typical travel day that is really exhausting for anyone, let alone someone with a disability. Number two is passenger assistance. Now, under the European legislation, the airport is responsible for your care from the moment you arrive at the airport to the moment you board the plane, then the airline is responsible for looking after you on board. There's a wide variety of services that airports and airlines offer for passengers with disabilities, whether that is assistance getting through the airport for ambulatory guests who just might struggle walking such a long distance. They provide wheelchairs or even electric buggies and they will drive you through the airport. Or if you need physical assistance pushing your wheelchair or carrying your hand luggage, they can help you through. They can also help you with the stairs at the aircraft doors or if you're like me and can't climb stairs, they will provide um, some sort of lift that will take you from the ground up to the aircraft door if it isn't a flight that has a flat um, skywalk to the door. Um, and finally, if you are unable to walk from the aircraft door to your seat, which bear in mind can be quite a walk, there are lots of things you can do to safely get you to your seat. However, it's not always the easiest process. Typically, there is an aisle chair that you can use and transfer from your wheelchair into the aisle chair. They will then push you to your seat on board the aircraft where you'll transfer across. This aisle chair is not comfortable and if you physically need lifting from your wheelchair onto that chair, it's not dignified at all and it can be quite uncomfortable if there's a lot of people so my recommendation if you physically cannot transfer yourself and you need help or hoisting is to contact companies such as easy travel seat because they have devices that allow you to be hoisted more comfortably and in a more dignified way which is you know it's necessary especially if you are on a long haul flight and you're going to use that aisle chair to get to the onboard toilet. It's a much easier and safer way. So now that you've organised and booked your passenger assistance, you can move on to tip number three, which is organising your medical supplies. My first piece of advice is never pack your vital medications, treatments and equipment in your suitcase that will be going in the hold of the aircraft. This is because it is entirely possible for you to arrive at your destination and your suitcase not be there and it actually can take several days for them to locate it and get it to you. You can take extra cases and bags on board if needed, however the airline may ask you for a note just to clarify why you need that extra space. However, it is vital that any medications you are taking have the prescription label on and the name on the prescription label matches the name on your passport because when you're going through security they can be pretty strict. My next travel tip is protecting your equipment. 
particularly for those of you who travel with wheelchairs we all know you can get to your destination it is damaged or gone missing or something dreadful has happened to it so prior to your day of travel play around with your wheelchair work out how you can protect it and what you can take off and take on board with you to avoid it getting lost I have arrived at my destination and received my wheelchair at the gate but my wheelchair cushion was missing because it had actually flown off in the hold slid all the way down to the bottom of the aircraft and it took a little while to locate so just take into consideration what you can do to make your day of travel easier and provide you with peace of mind. Now there are products available to help you protect your wheelchair if you have a folding frame using a bag to put your wheelchair in um, is a great idea however do your research and make sure you pick one that is padded and secure. Bundle Bean actually have one that is fantastic for anyone with a folding frame um, and another idea is PYC wheelchair upholstery have custom made wheelchair pads to support basically every section of your wheelchair when traveling. Um, I recently used these on a long haul flight to Los Angeles and typically the legs of my wheelchair always come out scratched and because it's bright pink you see every single scratch and bump. Finally for those of you traveling with powered equipment take the time in advance to write out a list of instructions so the ground crew know how to handle and operate your equipment once you hand it over and also if you're traveling to a foreign destination where there's a language barrier it may be worth having part of the form in English and then part of the form in the language and um, say you're going to Spain in Spanish so the ground crew upon arrival know what to do. Once you've organized your supplies you can move on to Tip number five, which is packing. This may seem really obvious, but I strongly advise you pack sensibly, especially if you are gonna be relying on passenger assistance to get you through security in the airport. This is because it could actually take some time for you to go through the pat down and the wheelchair scan and things like that. So then your supplies and luggage is going through the scanner and coming out and the assistance will be taking care of it for you. So I always pack in sections. I keep all my liquids together and I literally put a note on top if they are over the typical allowance. So this method also makes it extremely easy once you arrive to your destination because you can just take those bags out, pop them on a unit and you have everything organized for your entire trip. Finally, I would suggest making your luggage easy to identify. This is something that is super important if you are going to rely on someone to get your luggage off the baggage belt. Now you might think taking a bright yellow suitcase is actually the easiest way to do this, but you would be surprised how many people take a bright yellow suitcase on a plane. So I typically put a coloured luggage strap around or some ribbon around the handle or a you know, really eccentric luggage tag. So when I'm sat there I can say it's the purple case with a yellow ribbon and a purple luggage belt around the middle and they know what they're looking for and it just makes it easier for everyone. My final piece of advice relating to planning your trip is to plan your airport experience. This may seem a little over the top but I promise you it will save you so much time and hassle on the day. Again, this is super helpful if you are utilizing the passenger assistance service because you can tell them, this is where I wanna go, I've researched it, it accommodates my needs. If you have allergies, it means you can find a restaurant or a cafe that has something that accommodates your needs. If you have a long layover and want to lie down, you know where to go. If you have sensory issues, you might want to go to a quiet room or a baby changing facility. There's all sorts of things available, especially at large international airports. So take the time, look at what's available and utilize it. It is there for you to use. Do not be ashamed. However, you may find that some of these facilities are not very common. I actually um, arrived at Heathrow Airport last summer and asked where the changing places toilet was because I had my carer and my assistance dog with me and a lot of luggage and it is impossible to get in a standard toilet and turn everything around and the staff didn't know what a changing places toilet was or where it was. Luckily Felix had 
looked it up and planned where it was so we could work it out but yeah do your research <laughs> number seven on my list of travel tips is all about arriving at the airport always allow extra time when you are traveling because so many things can happen that you don't account for and it just again allows you to relax and not rush everything now depending on the type of assistance you have organized you may need assistance from the moment you arrive at the airport whether that is from the car park or a drop at a point or public transport they should have told you whether you ring a number on arrival or you press one of the kind of buttons that will alert the passenger assistance team. Other people may simply choose to have assistance just at the aircraft gate um, and a little bit of support is transferring on and off the plane. It truly does depend on what your needs and preferences are. However, remember what you have booked and clarify this once you get to check in if you haven't already spoken to someone from the passenger assistance team because they can make sure everything is in place and your trip goes as smoothly as possible. Make sure if you are traveling with equipment that you get the correct luggage tag at the check-in desk whilst you are dropping your luggage off and handing over your passports. This is particularly important for anyone that will be taking their wheelchair to the aircraft door because it needs a specific tag that's typically orange in the UK to alert the ground staff upon arrival that your chair needs to come straight back to the aircraft door as opposed to going to the baggage belt with the suitcases. So if you've followed my previous packing tips, going through security should be a breeze. However, I know firsthand that it can be so daunting. So don't be afraid to speak up if you need help or if you need a little bit of extra time because it is a system, especially in large airports, and they just want you in and out. But that doesn't suit all of us. And if you need to take your time or you need to explain how your oxygen machine operates and that it can't go through the scanner, speak up. Do not be afraid. And if you have someone from the passenger assistant team with you, they can do this for you, so let them know what you need. Once you're through security, you can put into place all the plans that you have previously made about what restaurants you want to do, which areas you maybe want to go and have a sit down in. If you are utilising the passenger assistance services, they may ask you to wait in a particular zone um, once they've taken you to a shop or to the bathroom. This is because they obviously have to help a lot of passengers in one day. So just bear this in mind if you have plans, but you are requiring help the entire way through the airport. Tip number eight is the flying experience. Regardless of whether you make your own way to the gate or rely on the passenger assistance team, if you have a preference as to whether you board first or last, let the staff know as soon as you arrive. Once you get to the aircraft door, remember if you have that special tag on your wheelchair or equipment, let the crew know. Say, this is my chair, it is tagged. Upon arrival, please look out for it and let the ground staff know there should be a chair returning to the door. Because you are not at the aircraft door once that plane lands, so they can advocate and communicate with the ground staff to ensure that everything runs as smoothly as possible. Finally, once the plane lands, do not be ashamed to stay in your seat until your wheelchair is at the door. I have sometimes been told, oh, it's coming, or the team will be, you know, up the walkway to help you. No, that's not acceptable. Like, I need help now, and I need my wheelchair at the door for a reason. It was tagged. I've even had language barriers and I've even had the French police called on me because I refused to move. Um, and this was after a horrific day of travel. But luckily the pilot was able to advocate for me and saw why it was imperative I wasn't just shoved in one of those huge airport wheelchairs that have no support at all and I needed my own equipment. So stand your ground. And then the assistance team will be able to help you all the way through. Number nine is accommodation. Like when planning your flight or airport experience, research 
what type of accommodation meets your needs and preferences. So many hotels, apartments, villas and things say they're accessible and they really aren't. So regardless of what they say on their site, contact them either by the phone or email, ask them for pictures, ask them for dimensions, say how big is your lift, do you have a rolling shower or a bathtub, do you have handrails? Literally ask them all those nitty gritty questions that you need to know to make your stay as easy and accommodating as possible. Another thing to take into consideration is what do you plan to do whilst you're away? If you plan to visit specific public attractions or go to the beach, anything like that, work out how are you gonna get there from the hotel? Is it within walking distance? Will you need to use public transport? Because these factors may play a big part in which hotel or accommodation you actually use. My final piece of advice is make sure you have good travel insurance. And this links in to tip number nine because I would highly recommend doing this before you book your accommodation. So should anything happen and you're unable to fly or you get a crazy crisis like COVID-19 and you're unable to go on your holiday, you have insurance in place. Make sure you have something that it covers you for every eventuality. I have been rushed into a foreign hospital before for reasons that were totally <laughs> unexplainable, but because I had good insurance, everything was okay. So we've reached number 10 on my list of travel tips, and this section is purely to run over my recommendations. First on my list, is obviously the easy travel seat that I mentioned earlier on in this video. This is an excellent product and is designed to help you transfer in a safe, comfortable and dignified manner, which is so important if you require that type of help. Next up is flying disabled. Chris Wood knows all about how uncomfortable and embarrassing the process of transferring from your wheelchair to an aircraft can be. So he is actively campaigning for wheelchair users that require powered, supportive devices to be able to stay in their wheelchairs on board. And this is so important. So definitely go and look him up if you are interested in supporting that campaign. Because it's vital and it is going to change the way air travel works for passengers with disabilities at some point in the future. Next up is QEF, which offer a try before you fly scheme. Similar to the easy travel seat, they have things that can just make the process of transferring and actually on board once you're in the seat a lot comfier and more supportive, especially if you need head support or spinal cushions, things like that. They have a lot available and you can actually go to their center and literally try them out before you fly, which is great. Finally, if you are thinking, Lauren, these are a lot of great tips, but I am unable to do that research, or this is all a little bit overwhelming, contact an agency. However, if you're gonna do this, I highly recommend contacting someone who is either disabled themselves or has a lot of experience of booking trips for passengers of all abilities. This is because they will truly understand the nitty gritty things that need to be in place to support you. And that is why I recommend Nick from Travel Counselors. He lives with a disability and he provides an excellent service for anyone, whether that is purely just booking a flight or booking an entire holiday. He can help with the whole process and he will understand your position. And that is it. Thank you so much for watching this video. I understand this is probably a lot to take in. So if you'd like to read about my travel tips in more details, go to our website and you will find a series of blog posts all about traveling with a disability and some other bonus tips about how to stay cool if you're going somewhere hot or stay warm if you're going somewhere that's absolutely freezing. Thank you so much for watching. Bye. So the first one, when you arrive at your holiday destination, do you find you have to plan out each day in detail or are you able to be somewhat spontaneous? 
Do you want to go first, Lauren? Yeah, I mean, I'll go for it. I find for me, like, I'm such a planner as a disabled person, but I think as someone with a disability, it's quite hard to be, you can't always stick to your plan because it's really difficult to say, okay, right, we're doing this at two o'clock because you never know at two o'clock, you might faint 10 minutes before two o'clock. Um, so having sort of plans set in stone that are quite loose, so loose plans always tend to be the sort of way, the way I go, definitely. Brilliant, thank you. Anything like, you wanted to add? I was going to say, like, I used to be spontaneous before having Lauren as a, as a partner, and she is unbelievably pushy on our plan. But that we have backup plans to the point where we have a plan A, B, and C where we go. And well, sometimes that's amazing because we've been in New York and we go to the good restaurant we want to go to and we can't get in or it's fully booked. And having a plan B or C or having weirdly like we want to go to the top of the rock and the clouds so we're on the top so we can actually see so having to move and having a plan a b yeah is the yeah. Best definitely like an ideal world plan and then yeah. like okay dream trip a trip. high energy plan and then a relaxed plan as well and then okay things might go wrong let's do this instead kind of thing with your disability yeah. it's better to have a good day plan than a bad day plan don't put too much pressure on yourself to yeah. to stick to everything like that it's a holiday enjoy it whatever you're able to do that day. Absolutely, exactly. Really good point. Um, and so following on from what you said, Felix, there, where obviously before you met Lauren, you could just do whatever you wanted. Have you found that there's been a holiday you wanted to go on and you couldn't? Or is there always a way that you can make things happen, do you think? Um, no, no I, I literally give Lauren a budget for a holiday. And again, being disabled, being up through the night. I mean, the places that she's got us into, when we was in New York, we were on like Times Square, in this hotel that had the fanciest bathroom and I was like when we turned up I drove from my grandparents house in this like rough old 15 year old car and we're turning up and we walk into the foyer and it was just like the posture space and felt way out of depth so now I always think if you've got a partner that's a good planner give them the budget tell them to go and have fun and just see what they're able, able to come up with um because in my opinion there's never an answer as we were doing something it just it just may be a convoluted and difficult way to get there I definitely um, think disabled people are pretty unstoppable. If, if yeah. they've got something in their mind that they want to do, they're going to do it, whether you say they can't or not kind of thing. And and, and if it's something that's going to require an off-roading wheelchair, don't plan that trip until you've raised money to go and get yourself the equipment to do it. Because the other answer is, yeah, like just because you can't do it tomorrow doesn't mean you can't do it ever. And if that's your dream, make it happen. Um, but yeah, always make sure you have the right equipment for the task at hand because there's nothing worse than taking a wheelchair, say, somewhere in Europe and it having cobbled streets and you've only taken a small manual chair and you're being shaken to bits when you can take something to the hand is doing off-roading or something that's more comfortable. So yeah, always make sure you travel with the right equipment for the task. But yeah, never, never say no. Just take your time and make your dreams happen. Exactly. Never say never. I love that. That's brilliant. Um, any advice for someone who's disabled that's never gone abroad before, they're a bit too nervous, what would you think is some advice for someone that wants to make that first step? You go to yeah, I'd say definitely take someone with you that you're comfortable with in the sense of like someone that like you you live with or you know like in your day-to-day -day life that's seen you at your worst or so seen you at your best. Um, someone that like you're going to be comfortable around like you're not going to be able to escape in the sense of, right, they're going to know your boundaries. Um, plan plan rest in. Um, just because you're going on holiday doesn't mean that you need to go 100%, but also push yourself out your boundaries a little bit. I mean, I know if I'm going to go on holiday, I am going to come back and feel completely knackered, but also making memories sometimes is worth it. But then to the same extent, you know, make sure that you're... You know, I talk about spoons a lot. Make sure you're managing your spoons in terms of your energy levels. Um, definitely. Um, maybe start local um, in terms of, you know, if you for your first trip, maybe don't don't trek to Thailand. Maybe go to somewhere like France where it's, you know, yeah. just over the water, um, you know, with a parent or a partner or something like that. Um, and then, you know, somewhere that's like known to be renownedly like great for access as opposed to somewhere that might be a little bit more quaint and hard to to get to Excellent. yeah you know about felix i say like just we're all out there we have a large community and there are gonna wherever you are whatever disability you have whatever you've planned someone's probably done it before or someone's gone through those same struggles so reach out 
you know there's no harm in asking your social media group had anyone done anything or reaching out for access to like other forums mm-hmm. and things because yeah instagram like, and facebook are really good for asking just like asking questions oh there's loads of facebook groups has anyone been here i want to go here but i don't know what what the train's like will my chair cope will will same, i be able to do this is there any good coffee shops that sort of thing the disabled community are there as a support network it's like the whole point of like disability union us and everyone is it's about getting people together that can help each other and you've got to remember that you're not on this alone you don't have to sit in your room feeling like this is you doing this there are many people out there that will help make it happen and so just remember that you know, just do that and the, the more advice you have and the more you plan the better your trip will be so just yeah take whatever you can get and go with it really Absolutely. So this one's more about sort of day trips, perhaps more locally. Um, how would you go about finding out whether a place is accessible or how to get any additional assistance? Would you check their website? Would that be what you would do? Well, um, it, it, yeah. um, personally, I always check the website, but I also call them first. Um, and again, like I check with other disabled people that have been there. Um, because a lot of the time, like they might say that they have a lift, but you know a lot of the time for you know things go wrong in life and the lift might be right broken or you know there might be building works or for whatever reason it's always good to to make sure that whatever is stated is definitely is definitely the case um and yeah you know where someone might say um it's got one step so just make sure if it is it like one big step or you know always yeah. ask extra extra questions just in case like more questions are better i think yeah, definitely. Anything you wanted to add, Felix? I was going to say, yeah, there, there are people out there and apps and things. So you've got access rating now that now exists in places. You've got Human's Guide's really good for toilets and things. It's always worth checking out Human's Guide. And then there's this the the app. Yeah, and then there's Neat. It's a Neat box for our guy from Garen Neat, which designs a way in which you, companies have signed up. So you literally leave a voice message and it will flat and it will tell that shop or location when you're within a distance where you are so they send so so it's often just have they have a ramp available but it's not always out it geolocates to your phone when you're within a certain distance it locates that office or building that you're within that location and yeah, so they amazing. put on the ramp and stuff so there are lots use a lot again it's just go on social media and ask because mm. technology is really powerful these days it's really powerful the information's out there and if it's not don't be afraid to call and ask the questions to people because as you say there's nothing worse you than planning a perfect day, day, getting there and then there not being an accessible toilet or something. You have a great lunch with your friends, and then, but if you need the toilet and it's not there, it's a really day. So yeah. always ask ahead. Because, or the disabled toilet being upstairs, or yeah. you know, all the funny things like that. Or going to a shopping mall and them using the disabled toilet as a store cupboard, or yeah. all these ridiculous things that happen. Um, it's always better to ask and plan ahead. Yeah. 100%. Okay, I think that's all of the questions for now. But Access Your Life are going to be back for a second presentation, everybody, at 20 to 1, so 12.40. And that will be on buying medical equipment tips on that. And I think you're both back for the Q&A then as well? Yeah. Excellent. Okay, so we'll welcome Felix and Lauren back then. Um, so the next presentation is going to be Tail Feather TV at 11.30. So in about 10 minutes time, we'll see you back here. Thanks again, Lauren and Felix. That was a brilliant presentation.